Hello everybody, this is Elham from Skin Chakra and today I'm going to talk to you about the HLB system which is something that completely confuses novice formulators. HLB system is a system to predict and understand the properties of surfactants. You must know that surfactant is an abbreviation for surface active agents. Now, surfactants are a huge group of molecules and ingredients that are used in almost every part of life and industry, from construction industry to oil to um, rubber industry, lac and paint, uh, as well as cosmetics and pharmaceutical and food industries. Despite all of these different applications and slightly different structures, they have one thing in common or are the two things in common. One is that they all reduce the surface tension of the water. Another common uh, property uh, for the surfactants is that they all, no matter what the property, what the molecular weight, what, what the structure, they all contain a lipophilic part and a hydrophilic part. In, in very conventional models of the surfactants, we refer to these as a lipophilic tail and a hydrophilic head. In most novel surfactants, specifically in non-ionic surfactants that are non-PEG, it is not so easy to uh, describe it as a tail and a head, but anyway, the molecule contains lipophilic parts and hydrophilic parts. And that is the cause of all of these different properties that we uh, use and we benefit from in different industries. Surfactants, depending on the molecular weight or structure, have different properties. Uh, they uh, could be wetting, emulsifying, solubilizing, foaming, but they have detergency or have defoaming properties, antibacterial and conditioning properties. These are different properties that lead to different applications in different industries, but these are the properties that uh, all uh, refer to surfactants. So to understand or to be able to predict which properties a surfactant will have, we have to refer to the HLB system, and that is the hydrophilic-lipophilic balance. And that refers to, coming back again to the structure of the surfactant, the balance between the lipophilic part and the hydrophilic part of the molecule. This is a model or a system that was expressed uh, the first time in 1949 by William Griffin. This model was first designed specifically to predict the properties of different sorbic and ester emulsifiers. Um, in the um, company that Griffin worked, they have prepared different uh, PEG derivatives of sorbit and esters, and they have realized that these PEG derivatives had, have different properties, and so they wanted to create a model to predict the properties and the applications of these PEG derivatives. So the model was specifically designed for PEG derivatives of sorbit and esters, and then was expanded to other surfactants. There is a very interesting uh, article written on the 60th anniversary of the HLB system. This is the address of the article if you are interested to uh, learn more or to know more or to go back to the history of the HLB. I recommend that you um, read this article. It is an open access article. You don't need any subscription or you don't need to pay for the article. And it is really interesting. So the way that Griffin um, expressed the HLB or defined the HLB was the molecular mass of the hydrophilic part of the molecule divided by the molecular mass of the complete molecule multiplied by 20. 
So this is a mathematic equation. These days they use uh, other uh, models or other uh, calculations to uh, get to the HLB of molecules. And this is another um, rather more precise way of um, calculating the HLB of the molecule. And this is by uh, measuring the heat of hydration of the molecules. It is a calorimetric measurement and an instrumental measurement and is one of the rather modern uh, methods of uh, measuring the or defining the HLB of the molecules. So to give you an example, I'm going back to Polysorbates, these are the molecules or the group of surfactants that Griffin designed his HLB model for them. You, even if you are working in a natural cosmetics and you have never worked with these molecules, you perhaps have heard about them. Polysorbate 20 and polysorbate 80, these are both PEG derivatives of sorbic and esters. And uh, these are the... Uh, HLB values 16.7 and 15 and the, because of these slightly different HLB these two molecules have completely different functions and work completely different. The HLB model was so defined or designed that each non-ionic surfactant or emulsifier has a certain HLB and each lipophilic ingredient that you want to emulsify has a certain required HLB. In order to create a stable emulsion, you need to match these two HLBs together. That means the HLB of your surfactants and emulsifiers or emulsifier blend must match the HLB of the lipophilic ingredient that you want to create the emulsion with. The HLB system was very strictly followed and used in those days, specifically when they worked with PEG derivative emulsifiers and highly refined or synthetic lipophilic ingredients such as paraffin wax, paraffin oils, mineral oils. It was really very strictly uh, calculated and followed. These days, we don't use the HLB system that uh, narrowly and that strictly, but it is still good to know what it is about. And when you look at the um, dossier or documentation of a surfactant by looking at its HLB, you can almost know how you can use it. Although for most of the modern surfactants, they don't even bother to measure or record the HLB. So these are a few ingredients, lipophilic ingredients that are used in uh, emulsifications and in emulsions. And these are the required HLBs for uh, creating an oil in water emulsion. So the HLB system is a numeric system from 0 to 20. By zero, the molecule must be completely oil soluble, has nothing hydrophilic in it. And by 20, it's the other extreme that the molecule is completely water soluble and everything in between is a surfactant with a certain HLB. So depending on the HLB of the molecule, we have different properties, although they are all surfactants again, from deformer to water and oil emulsifiers to wetting agents, oil and water emulsifiers, detergents, and solubilizers. So you see that these are all different molecules, different properties, but they all have in common that they are surfactants. So this is maybe easier for you to follow. This is not very exact, but it is approximately shows that with which uh, HLB range, the properties uh, and functions of the surfactant. So you see that they somehow overlap here, for example, wetting agents and oil and water emulsifiers somehow overlap. And there are molecules that may pass in both of these categories or 
solubilizer and detergent they overlap almost and you see that some detergents are used in solubilizer blends as well such as capril capril uh, glucoside that it it's on, on its own is a foaming detergent but it is used in many solubilizer blends as well so you cannot strictly separate the molecules but still you can somehow put them in different boxes and in different categories now i want to refer to two topics that uh, usually confuse novice formulators and uh, we realize it from the questions that uh, come to our help desk uh, from the customers or our readers these are solubilizers and emulsifiers solubilizers and emulsifiers are both surfactants and you may find uh, some common ingredients in surfactant blends and solubilizer blends that uh, some ingredients are even common but these are completely different ingredients with different functions and you use them differently an emulsifier obviously is used to create an emulsion either you have an oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion and as we have seen the mm, nature of the emulsifier is defined by its HLB which is uh, defined by its structure so you need different emulsifiers to create uh, different types of emulsions here again you see that for an oil in water emulsion you need an emulsifier with a higher HLB when compared to a water in oil emulsion for a solubilizer we need another HLB range and you need a solubilizer when you want to solubilize an essential oil or a lipophilic preservative in water so this is not creating an emulsion this is incorporating the essential oil or sometimes not often a lipophilic preservative in the water so this works for small molecules such as essential oils but usually doesn't work for big molecules like uh, triglycerides silicon oils or uh, lipophilic vitamins the outcome is completely different because here you have a solution in the previous case you have an emulsion of course you can use an emulsifier when you are working with essential oils but if your main aim is just to add the essential oil to water you don't need any emulsifier you need you need a solubilizer so in this video we will show you shortly that we have added blue tansy oil to water then we add the solubilizer to one of the uh, test tubes and you see the difference here with the added solubilizer you see that we have a completely homogeneous liquid and here without the solubilizer the blue tansy oil sits on top of the water we deliberately use the blue tansy oil so that you can see the difference if you are using other essential oils sometimes the difference is not that clear but the concept is the same we are using a solubilizer to incorporate the essential oil completely into a homogeneous solution in the water so coming back again to solutions suspensions and emulsions in cosmetic products we usually work mainly with solutions and emulsions suspensions are basically used in food or in pharmaceutical industries very seldom used in cosmetic industry but uh, nevertheless it's good to know the difference a solubilizer creates a completely water soluble blend it is completely homogeneous system and the particle size is under one nanometer and it's completely transparent in suspension the particles are part partially water soluble it is a non-homogeneous system the particle size is between one to thousand nanometers and the outcome is translucent and the emulsion it is 
non -sol water soluble system uh, the system is non homogeneous the particle size is between 1 to 10 micrometer and the outcome is milky unless you are working with micro emulsions and nano emulsions and that's a, another topic but with the conventional emulsions this is the difference so a solution or when you use a solubilizer you create something that is completely a homogeneous system and it remains homogeneous no matter what you do but an emulsion is by definition is a non-homogeneous system and is doomed to phase separation. You can do something to increase the shelf life and to improve the uh, stability so that the emulsion remains stable over a few years. But from a physical point of view, the product is a non-homogeneous an unstable product. Clarify the topic for you, for those of you who are confused and mistake these ingredients together. And I invite you, if you want to learn more and in depth about the cosmetic chemistry, to become a member of our membership group. And this is the link if you want to join and uh, see how it works. Otherwise, I'll bid you good day and wish you all the best and we'll see you during the next presentation.